In this video, I'm going to go over the steps on how I make my YouTube videos and how you can implement them for making your own videos. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anton Wong. If you're new here, I help you on this channel to understand, unlock, and unleash the power of video. So if you haven't yet, hit subscribe. Now I have been making YouTube videos for about 10 years now and been uploading onto this channel for one year. I've adjusted various parts of my video making process and will probably continue to do so. However, I I figured it would be a good time to let you know how I make my videos so hopefully you can use some of my methods when making your videos. That sounded kind of repetitive. Anyway, and if you don't want to use any of these methods, you can just sit down and enjoy my process or just sit down and critique it for how bad it is, whatever. I like to break down my YouTube video making process into five distinct steps. Idea, development and pre-production, shooting and production, editing, preparation for upload and follow up. Now each of these five steps could have their own multiple videos easily and I'll probably make more detailed outlines on how I do each of those in future videos. But for now, step one, idea development and pre-production. Ideas for my YouTube videos usually come to me at various times. Sometimes I'll be at my desk working on another video or I'll be about to sleep and come up with an idea or oftentimes I'm sitting on the toilet. However, or whenever my ideas strike, I'll write them down as soon as I can and put them into my Google Doc of ideas. There are a couple of different ways that I'll actually formulate my ideas sometimes, and sometimes I'll actually just sit down and think about them too. One of the ways I'll do this is by using my vidIQ keyword research tool. I'll search up all the different topics and keywords into the YouTube search bar that are related to my niche of video, video production, media, and marketing. The ones with a high score, I will write down on a list with the score and average views. Now, search views and views in general aren't everything, but they do help. That's when I start using my next technique of asking what if. Like, what if I did what this successful YouTuber or this successful YouTube video is doing, but put my own twist on it or put it in my own niche? That's how I came up with my challenge videos, after all. And finally, I have ideas that are just opinions that I have. And if you watch any of my video essay type videos, those are just thoughts that I have to get out. And how do I get those ideas out? Well, first, I think about what my title and thumbnail would be. If I can't think of a good one, I'll usually put it on hold unless I really have to get that video video idea out. Then once I have my title, thumbnail, and hook, I take my idea and flesh it out into a rough shooting script. This usually starts with me breaking down my videos into different subsections or chapters that you might see on the play line. This allows me to think of the video in smaller digestible chunks. Now I used to do bullet points, but since getting a teleprompter, I started typing out my entire whole script of what I'm going to say. This makes it easier for me in the filming and editing process and also allows me to easily later turn the script into blog posts if I'd like. My scripts almost always start with a cold open hook and teaser of what's to come. It's followed by my channel introduction and then I get into the topic of the video. Sometimes I'll get into the history behind certain topics before getting into my points in order to provide context to the viewers. I'll then make my different points that I want to make with my video or cover different aspects if I'm reviewing something. These can also be different steps if it's a tutorial or a list if it's a, you know, a list. I also try to keep in mind any of the shots that I want to get for the video, but I don't include these in the script. I'll finally close my script with a summary of my points and some final thoughts before closing the video. After reviewing my script, I'll move on to shooting. Shooting and production. I'll probably make a full video on this topic later, but I'll usually start with transferring my script from my Google Doc to my teleprompter app and set the prompter parameters. I then set up my G85 on 1080p, 30 frames per second, with the prompter extension and lighting with my Aperture Amaran. My audio is the Rode Wireless Go that I just clip onto my clothing right here. You're, you're seeing it right here. I'll leave a link to all these in the description. From then, I test my audio and check my focus and framing to make sure everything looks good, and then I hit record. I'll usually start by posing for my thumbnail before going into the script, but you know, sometimes I forget. I then just read off the teleprompter and redo any lines if I mess up. Once I'm done, I stop recording and check the file to make sure that it's okay. If my video requires me to shoot B-roll footage, I'll start doing that as well. I'll shoot those B-roll clips with my G85 or or with my phone. Once I'm finished shooting, I will start packing things away. I don't 
put it away completely in bins or cases or anything, just enough so that it's out of the way and batteries are charging. If my video requires screen recording, I will do that with my desktop with OBS. I then start also looking for stock footage from story blocks that I might need for the video and also look for a good music track on Artlist. That brings us to step three, editing. Editing starts with the file organization. I'll transfer my recorded files onto my SSD in an organized folder structure. I have a project folder with six folders inside, one for each footage, audio, video, which is video that I didn't record, so any stock footage or anything like that, graphics and photos, exports, and scratch disk or the project file itself. I'll transfer any files into their respective folders. I'll open Premiere Pro and begin a new project in my scratch disk folder with my video title as the file name. Upon opening, I'll begin transferring my files into the project window and begin editing. I'll start with editing the main delivery portion of my project by first correcting the color and adjusting any audio levels or EQ. I'll do this before cutting out any of the video outtakes and dead air that I have in the video. Hey, I'm in the editing process of this video right now, and I just want to say that yes, while I am aware that putting in the clips by putting in the in and out points and putting those on the timeline is a lot probably faster and then using adjustment layers for, you know, uh, adjusting the color and, you know, doing the audio, that that might be faster, but this, this is the way that I'm doing it. Uh, I might be changing it to uh, a slightly different method of editing, but this is how I've been doing it for a little bit now. Um, okay, back to the video. After I'm happy with the structure and pacing of the video, I'll go back and go through and implement any of the B-roll or stock footage before applying any text or graphic to the project. I then begin to underlay the video with music for the video with a reduced level and a duct mid-range in the EQ. The songs are always shorter than the video, so I'll have to copy and loop my favorite part a few times. Finally, I'll look over the video to make sure that it is to my liking and change anything that I don't before hitting export. For export, I'll usually go with 1080p, 30 frames per second, H.264 file with a high bit rate. And once again, I'll go way more into this editing process in another video. But that brings us to step four, preparation for delivery. At this stage, I'll start preparation for delivery. This is when I start making my thumbnails. I'll export a still from one of my poses that I did for the thumbnail when recording the video. I'll then bring it into Photoshop to delete the background to make it transparent and export it as a PNG before bringing it into Illustrator. In Adobe Illustrator, I have a specific thumbnail template that I like to use for my videos that has the green border that you often see. I then start with a background of something related to the video and then I'll blur that out to emphasize the foreground. Usually. I then will probably gather any photos or icons or other graphics that I want to put onto the thumbnail. I will then layer the photo cutout of me on top of everything and generally I will put it to the side or sometimes to the center but I'll generally try to put it on top of the green border so it looks like I'm sort of protruding out. I'll also usually add a drop shadow or an outer glow on myself or any of those other graphic elements that I want or text elements. Now on YouTube I'll I'll upload my exported video after checking it for mistakes. I then clarify my final title and custom thumbnail. I'll write my description to be similar enough to the video intro with enough keywords at the top to optimize for search and make the description, you know, long enough. I'll input as many as the links that I have included and mentioned in the video. I'll also add any relevant cards linking to the relevant videos, playlists, or YouTube channels. And I'll also add any final end card stuff, so you know, videos or playlists or my channel. Once it's done processing, I either schedule it or send it public. Number five, follow up. Upon upload, I'll begin sharing the link to some of my social media pages to get some, you know, initial views. Also, once the automatic captions are done, I'll edit and publish them as an official captions option and also download the SRT file for future use. I also will begin to read and respond to any of the comments that you guys leave that I get on my videos. And if I find that my videos need a change in the title or thumbnail or description, I'll do that as well. And then it's on to my next video. So there you have it. Number one, writing in pre-production. Number two, shooting in production. Number three, editing. Number four, preparation and delivery. And number five, follow-up. Now, those are my five steps that could easily be broken down into more videos, but 
that's basically the overview. And if you guys have a specific question or a specific part that you would like me to do an entire video on, be sure to leave a comment below. Be sure to also check out my other videos on the different aspects of making videos. If you like this video, be sure to hit like. But with that out of the way, I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Take care. Bye.